painting and airbrushing platinum silicone skins. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the basic process of painting a platinum silicone skin with more platinum silicone. And for the part, I'll be using a cast bust that I did in a previous video using TC5130F Platinum Silicone. Now, the painting process is really important if you make silicone dolls, silicone masks, or silicone medical simulators. But I'll be going through the process of both brush painting as well as airbrushing to create a realistic flesh tone over a platinum silicone skin. Now, if you missed it, be sure to check out on the end screen. I'll link the first two parts in this series on making a silicone bust, both the casting as well as the seaming video. Now, a quick disclaimer before we get started. Remember that painting is an artistic process and your results will vary depending on your skill level and mastery of the materials used. This process involves solvents and should be done in a well-ventilated area while wearing a respirator mask. If you substitute materials or additives, you will get different results. And of course, practice makes perfect. And also I'd like to point out that this is my approach to painting a platinum silicone bust. Yours might vary slightly from this, but I offer this as a good starting point for painting platinum silicone skins. Now to begin, there's 10 important points that you want to remember whenever you're about to paint platinum silicone, especially translucent silicone skins. Number one, you want to make sure the parts are clean. Make sure your silicone is clean and free of any release residue. Also, paint silicone parts as soon as possible. Painting silicone works best over fresh silicone. Number three, use good lighting in your painting area. I personally prefer a mixture of incandescent lighting as well as fluorescent lighting. Number four, work in a well-ventilated area and wear a mask. Five, make sure you're thinning your silicone for airbrushing with compatible solvent. Number six, make sure you pigment your silicone with compatible pigments. Number seven, you cannot paint lighter than the intrinsic color of the silicone piece. You can go darker, but you can't go lighter. Number eight, you want to dry each layer or each color before you proceed to the next color. And number nine, you want to brush paint with good brushes for oil painting brushes that are solvent resistant so they don't come apart when they're exposed to the solvent used for thinning silicone. And number 10, you want to airbrush with an external mix airbrush whenever possible. An external mix airbrush mixes the air and the paint outside of the airbrush so they're much easier to clean and maintain. Now for this paint job, I'm going to be using one of the world's cheapest airbrushes here. This is a, a quick change external mix airbrush from Harbor Freight. These are really cheap, but they're good for starting out and learning how to airbrush so you don't have to worry about messing up a good expensive brush. Now for the brushes I'll be using for the brush painting portion, I typically use artist brushes for oil painting and the reason I use those is they usually are glued together with a glue that is solvent resistant. So you don't have to worry about the brushes falling apart when they're exposed to the solvent that you're using to thin your silicone. Now we'll also be using a flick brush and to make your own flick brush you simply take a half inch or one inch chip brush and cut that down short like a toothbrush. And what that does is that gives you a short end that you can run your finger across and flick little flecks of paint off that brush. And it works beautifully for creating freckles and uh, little dots of color. Now we're going to be creating our own paint base for this. And to do that, we'll be mixing platinum silicone with silicone pigment. Remember that silicone pigment by itself is not paint. This will never dry on its own. But real important, you want to pigment your platinum silicone with the appropriate pigment. So here is silicone pigment that we'll be using for that process. Don't use acrylic paint or food color or oil paints or uh, polyurethane pigment, all those things run the risk of inhibiting the cure of platinum silicone. Now, to thin this out for airbrushing and brush painting, we're going to be using solvent. Now, the three solvents I typically use are either solvent thinner, OSS, or naphtha. Now, most of these are readily available out there. The OSS is a little harder to find, but solvent thinner you can get from Sculpt Nouveau. That's a general purpose, environmentally friendly solvent. It's a naphtha replacement for California. OSS, of course, is odorless solvent from silicone art materials. And then, of course, naphtha is available at most hardware stores and most paint stores. But real important, you want to make sure you're using a compatible solvent. When in doubt, test it. For this video, I'll be using the OSS that is the odorless solvent. 
And while this is the safest, it's still a good idea to make sure you work in a well-ventilated area and wear a mask anytime you're airbrushing or spraying silicone. Now, for our paint base, I typically use more of the silicone that I used for casting the original part. Now, in the BJB line of one-to-one -one silicone skin materials, there's three materials that I typically use for this kind of application. There's the 5100, that's the really soft 0025. Typically, that's one I'd recommend for silicone masks and silicone dolls and medical simulators. And then there's the 5110 and TC5110F. Of course, the F is for fast, and that cures to about a five short A, kind of an average human skin softness. And then slightly firmer, we have the TC5130 and 5130F. Again, the F for fast, and that cures to about a 25 short A. And that's what we're using in the bus that we're going to paint today. Now, there are formulated platinum silicone paint systems, but I really like to paint with more of the same silicone I used for the casting because that minimizes having to buy additional silicones just to do a very specific process. So if I cast the bus in 5130F, I'm going to paint the bust with a additional 5130F. Now if you used any mold release when you're casting your silicone bust, that needs to be cleaned off the part before you start painting. Now sometimes when I'm casting silicone like this, I'll use ZIP301 mold release. So acetone is a great way to remove that from the cast silicone part. But remember, if you're using a different mold release, you might need to use a different solvent. So you want to pay attention to that and when in doubt, ask the manufacturer. Now to keep this video as concise as possible, I'm just going to show the mixing and coloring of one batch of silicone. Now with platinum silicone, when we're mixing up a catalyzed silicone like this to use as a paint base, you want to be as precise as possible. And TC5130F can be mixed by both weight or volume, but when you're working in these very small batches, it's a good idea to mix it by weight. And now I'm adding a little bit of silicone pigment to that. And you'll find that typically for painting, you'll need to add a little bit more silicone pigment than you would for your casting process. Because when you start adding solvent to that, that will dilute that color a little bit. So once we get our color the way we like it by adding silicone pigment, we're then going to dilute that with solvent. And we're going to be using the OSS solvent to thin that down. Now remember, since this is a catalyzed silicone, you want to keep track of your working time. So we have a seven to eight minute working time and about a one hour cure. So the amount of time that we can paint with that or airbrush with that is typically about five minutes before it starts to thicken. Now it's important to thin your silicone, whether you're brush painting or airbrush painting. If you're airbrushing, you're gonna be adding a lot more solvent, but uh, typically for brush painting, I add about 30%, but here I'm mixing up a batch for airbrushing. And for that, I usually add about 50 to 60% solvent. And once I've got that stirred in, I'm ready to put that into my little airbrush jar. And again, remember that the clock is ticking. And typically what you're looking for here is the consistency of skim milk. That's typically a good consistency to go through an external mix airbrush. Now, before I start actually painting on my silicone, I like to test the spray pattern and the intensity of the color on a piece of poster board or foam core board. That's a good way to see exactly what you're going to get before you start spraying on your piece. Because when you're painting translucent silicone, you can't cover up your mistakes with more paint. So real important, you want to get your color just right before you start spraying your piece. And real important here to work very gradually and build up very light washes of color. That's how you get the most realism. And personally, I prefer to go back and forth from airbrush to brush painting. I don't like to use exclusively airbrush painting or exclusively brush painting. You get benefits from both approaches. And one of the things you'll see me do here is uh, keep the airbrush moving around. You want this to be very asymmetrical. And the red color that I'm using here is mainly just to break up that flat flesh tone in the casting and give it some more life. So just gradually building that up, giving some reds around some of the vascular areas, around the ears and the nose. But again, you want that to be very subtle and gradually build up those colors. Now, as you get towards the end of the working time, sometimes I'll switch over to brush painting and I'll use, again, my artist brush to go in and do my lip color or around the eyes or any other places. And that way I can get as much work possible out of that one batch of paint before it starts to gel. So here I'm just going in and touching up the lips and around the eyes. 
But again, real important to pay attention to the time and make sure that you're not waiting too long to apply your silicone because when that starts to gel, it's going to get very grabby and could potentially mess up your paint job. And then once that's applied, I'm going to hit that with a hairdryer and set it. And you'll find that will do it almost immediately with a hairdryer on high that will set that paint and allow you to move on to the next color. But this is a very important step. You want to set each layer or each color of paint before you proceed, and that way you don't wind up with a very muddy look of those colors mixing on your piece. So now I'm coming in with some blue and again just hitting some of those vascular areas. And one of the things I wanted to show in this video is it just takes a minimal amount of colors to bring a piece to life. If you've got a good base color intrinsic to your silicone, a good color embedded in the piece, it doesn't take a whole lot of different colors on top of that to elevate that to a really good level of realism. So here I'm adding some violet, and again, just going in around the, some of the vascular areas. And this is a bride of Biddy, so I do want some kind of bruising around where she's going to have little wires and hoses going into her. And then after each color, I'm going in there with a hairdryer to set that layer. Now, in addition to brush painting and airbrushing, you will be using the flick brush that we made earlier. And the way this works is you just take that brush and dip that in your paint base. And here I've mixed up some kind of uh, reddish brown and flick that. And again, I like to test that first on a piece of poster board or foam core board and then blot that off, blot off the excess. And that leaves those little subtle dots of color. And that's a great way to create realistic freckles and of course, little uh, capillaries and things like that. But just to give more life to the skin, I typically do this technique, this little flick brush technique with kind of a freckle color, a light brown color, and then also a uh, kind of a capillary color or kind of a rose or red color. And it's real important when you're doing this flick brush technique, flick that color on and then immediately take that paper towel and dab off the excess color. Because if you don't, they'll cure as little raised bumps of silicone. And you don't want that. You don't want that to be bumps. You want it to be little spots of color. Now I'm finishing this piece off with a light wash of yellow. And again, you'll notice I'm moving that airbrush around because I don't want any symmetry to this. I want that a very uh, modeled color so that you get a much more realistic, organic look to your flesh tone. And I'm finishing it off with this, but again, remember every layer of color that I put on, I then follow that up with a hairdryer to set it and then mix up another batch of color. So real important to do each batch separate, let that cure, and then move on to the next color. Now, once you've applied your last layer of color, you're ready to let that cure and dry completely. Remember, this goes through two stages. It's going to cure, the silicone will cure, and then the solvent will dry off. And that typically takes a few hours when you've added a lot of thinner to your silicone. And once that's dried for a few hours, you're ready to come back and mat your piece. Here, I'm matting this with SFP from SAM. That's a silicone finishing powder. And as always, I'll put all the material links in the video description, so be sure to check those out. Now, overall, this is a very simple paint job, but this will give you the basic skills and chemistry knowledge that you need to paint platinum silicone. Now, remember that I personally am a caveman thought out by your scientists. I am by no means a fine artist, so if I can achieve decent results with these techniques, I'm sure many of you out there that are much more artistically inclined than I am can do much better. Now stay tuned, I'll be posting a follow-up video to this where I do hair work on top of this silicone bust. And I cast a couple of different copies, so I'll show both uh, hand laid hair, punched hair, and also a lace wig applied. So again, stay tuned for that follow-up video. And as always, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, share this video with your friends and relatives, because who doesn't want to learn how to paint with platinum silicone? And of course, thanks for watching, and thanks for supporting the channel.